The original Audio-Technica M50 has been one of the most recommended closed headphones at the $150 price point. Thus, M50's pro fame has largely spilled over from the consumer audio segment. Still, M50 and M50X have an abundance of qualities useful for both music listeners as well as producers. These headphones perform just like they measure, a fun, clean sound. This is mostly due to M50X's U-shaped frequency response and extremely low distortion. On the top end of the U-curve, we have a peak at 5.5 kHz to 10 kHz, which goes up to plus 7 decibels at 10 kHz, which can cause a number of issues. First of all, too much de-essing will be applied to vocals, as the peak resides right at the sibilant range. Secondly, your sweeps won't be as accurate, because the FR peak will give you a false sense of rising. In general, this peaking can cause your mixes to be dull, one of the inherent cons of all exciting headphones, if used in the studio. Looks like Audio-Technica has really put in some serious R&D work in M50X's driver, because distortion this low at sub-bass frequencies has usually been reserved only for planar headphones. Kudos to Audio-Technica for bringing clean bass to the masses. The low-end response on these headphones is positively thunderous. There's no sub-bass roll-off until 20 Hz, and THD stays extremely low. All of the M50X headphones we measured exhibited level differences between channels. At 200 Hz to 600 Hz, there is a wide dip, which drops to around minus 5 decibels. Whilst not too annoying to consumers, it can cause trouble to LCR mixing advocates. On M50X, some string instruments, like guitars for example, will change tonality, depending on how they're panned. The effect will be subtle, but must be taken into account to prevent chasing ghosts in the mix. After Sonarworks has meticulously measured every dip and peak found in the M50X, our engineers generate a calibration profile. These profiles are available for every Sonarworks Reference 3 plug-in user, and will turn these headphones into a serious instrument, fit even for mastering. We can bet that when you turn on the Sonarworks calibration within DAW plugin, you'll wonder who flicked the fun switch off. Resist the urge to take the headphones off and listen to some familiar and well-mastered tracks. Your ears will need some time to readjust to the reference sound signature, and your first impression will surely be dull, for lack of a better word. At the same time, it will allow your mixes to translate well to speakers and just about any headphone out there. All in all, these headphones are a great candidate for calibration due to the low inherent THD and little change in tonality, depending on how they're placed on one's ears. Sonarworks calibration gets rid of the U-curve and makes these headphones a perfect candidate for mixing and mastering just about any kind of music. The channel imbalance issues mentioned earlier in the review can only be remedied by choosing individual calibration, which is a must for a serious work. Just like its predecessor, the M50X has a great fit that doesn't get in the way of everyday use. Unlike on-ear headphones, this one doesn't rely on a strong clamp to achieve a good seal, making it fairly comfy even in longer sessions. Construction-wise, the M50X is decent, but isn't the tank that is the venerable Sennheiser HD25 is. Like almost every other headphone out there, most of the outer construction is plastic. However, it feels like it's the kind of plastic that breaks rather than bends on stress. Both ear cups are on hinges, which allow them to be folded up for a more compact package. This time, Audio-Technica has decided to give the M50X a swappable cable and generously included three additional cords already in the box. A coiled 1.2 to 3 meter cable, 3 meter straight cable, and 1.2 meter portable cable. We commend Audio-Technica for going this route, because on most headphones, cables seem to be the first to prematurely fail. In terms of noise ceiling, the M50X works well, but again is overshadowed by some on-ear headphones and many in-ear monitors. The seal will be perfect for working in moderately noisy environments and will keep you from disturbing other people with the sound leakage. Has Audio-Technica hit a home run again? Could be so. No doubt it's a great headphone with relatively little shortcomings, but the tuning might be too fun to be considered reference grade. At the same time, M50X's competition doesn't fare any better. Most of the other closed studio headphones at this price range are starting to show their age. 
Sennheiser HD25 II scores some hits in the ergonomics department, but its drivers are a bit long in the tooth. Same goes for Sony MDR7506. Now, Bayer Dynamic DT770 is a worthy competitor to M50X sound-wise, but the Japanese headphone is able to land some hits with its three detachable cables and superior portability. The M50X calibrate very well, and after calibration pose a serious threat to newer high-end closed studio phones, like Focal Spirit Pro and maybe even Audio-Technica M70X. In the end, this is a modern headphone meant for modern music. Engineers who work with a lot of bass-heavy material will be in for a treat, as the M50X offers excellent low bass extension and very good resolution. They might not mind its other shortcomings, but should keep them in mind. Or they can use calibrated headphones and focus entirely on their work. Sonarworks calibration turns the M50X into one of the best closed headphones at any price.